Hey, I'm Kat, mom of three and founder of Ritual, the company setting a new standard in the supplement industry. When I was pregnant, I remember staring at my prenatal vitamins and thinking, what's in this stuff? All I found were vitamins high in heavy metals and lacking in the very essential nutrients we need. So we scoured the world for the best quality ingredients, backed by clinical studies, third-party tested, and Ritual's essential prenatal was born. Join our family of skeptics with 40% off your first month when you visit ritual.com slash podcast. Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Janet Gaynor and Charles Farrell in Seventh Heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. From Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, when the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences was founded in 1927, it chose a slim gold statuette to be the symbol of its award for distinctive achievement in any art or science within the motion picture industry. This famous statuette has since become the most coveted prize in Hollywood, representing, as it does, the highest of praise, the tribute of one's fellow artists. It's our pleasure tonight to present the charming and gifted lady who was the first actress to receive one of these treasured Oscars, Janet Gaynor. As a romantic team, Janet Gaynor and Charles Farrell had an appeal that has never been surpassed, and together they reigned as the king and queen of the movies, elected by the best of all possible judges, the American movie public. When Janet Gaynor was presented with the Academy Award as Best Actress of the Year, She was chosen for her outstanding performances in three pictures. Naturally, we have chosen to present her and Charles Farrell in the one that has become a classic love story, Seventh Heaven, and for which Frank Borzaghi received the first Academy Award for direction and Benjamin Glazer for adapting the screenplay. Now for distinctive achievement in another field, we present Lux Flakes with new color freshener. This new Lux gives an outstanding performance that you won't forget, keeping your new spring wardrobe as colorful as it was in yesterday's Easter parade. Here's Seventh Heaven, starring Janet Gaynor as Diane and Charles Farrell as Chico. <laughs> In the few weeks preceding the First World War, the city waits breathlessly for word which will plunge the world toward destruction. There is only one quarter where life goes on in the usual way, the Paris slums. There, amid poverty and squalor, in a world of screams and curses, street brawls and petty thievery, a teeming population fights for its existence at the dump heap of the city. On the darkest and dirtiest of these streets, a familiar cry goes up. Through the crowd slips a thin, long-nosed creature with a quick beady eye. Like a rabbit, he darts and turns, the police close behind him. Stop him, man! Stop him! Over this way! Let me go! Let me go! I swear it! Be quiet! Stand still! What's your name? My... My name? He's got no name. We call him Sewer Rat. Sewer Rat! Yes, that's right. That's what they call me. Sewer Rat. But I haven't done anything, I swear. Of course you haven't. Except to steal a watch from Father Chevillon. A watch? I stole a watch? Here here it is. I found it in his pocket. No, no, I didn't steal it. I swear I didn't. Quiet! You pray. Yes? Clear a path through the church door at the end of the street. We'll take this Sewer Rat to see Father Chevillon. Stand back there. Go on. Now stand back. Good evening. Won't you come in? Good evening, Father. Well, we found him. This is the thief. Let me go, please. Oh, no, you don't. We found your watch in his pocket. You do? Monsieur Brissac, I hope you will excuse this little interruption. Oh, of course, Father. I'm in no hurry. Thank you. This is your watch, isn't it, Father? Yes, that's it. It is my watch. Thank you. 
Come along, you. Oh, but wait. There's no need to arrest him. But he stole your ward. This was my joke, monsieur. A joke on him. The watch is made of tin. It has no value. Is there anything I can do, Father? Uh, no, thank you, Monsieur Brissac. This, uh, uh, this man stole a tin watch from me. A tin watch? Uh, yes. You see, with that as my bait, once in a while I find out who the thieves are. And when I've found them, I convert them. Or I try. I buy these watches by the dozen. I see. You may leave the prisoner here, officer. Very well, Father, if you wish. Good night. Good night. Come here, please. Sit down. What is your name? They, they call me Sewer Rat. You work in the sewers? Yes, with Chico. We clean the sewers. Chico? I've been wanting to meet him for some time. Why don't you bring him to me? Chico? Oh, I couldn't do that. He hates priests. Oh, and why? Chico, he says there is no God. That's what he says. He's a, an atheist. That's what he is. Now, uh, as for you, you believe in God, of course. Oh, yes. Yes. Now I want you to go into the church, through that little door there, and pray. Yes, Father. And you won't steal again, will you? Oh, no. I hope not. Yes, I hope not, too. I'm sorry, Mr. Bissack. Now then, you were telling me about the two sisters. I was about to say, Father Chevillon, that when the two sisters are found, they will inherit the bulk of their uncle's estate. Have you any information at all of these girls, Father? Their names again, Monsieur Brissac? Vulmir. Nana Vulmir is the older sister, Dion the younger. Nana and Dion. They ran away from their uncle's farm some years ago. My firm has finally managed to trace them to this quarter. Tell me, Monsieur Brissac, this inheritance the girls are to receive, are there any uh, complications? Well, their uncle was rather uncompromising on one point. It's a matter of morality. I see. And you expect to find morality in this quarter, Monsieur? I hope to find it, Father. You know these girls? I know them. I shall take you to them in the morning, Monsieur. But thank you. You know, I cannot help thinking about that miserable little thief a moment ago. Do you think it was wise, Father, letting him go? That creature belongs in jail, not in church. Does he? I don't know. Sometimes I'm a little discouraged, but then I stand here by the window. I think of all the people out there who need help. The two girls, Nana and Dion, the man Chico, perhaps, who was strong as a young bull and an atheist. And, and there, look, you see that man down there cranking his taxicab? Yes. <laughs> he calls it Eloise, after his old horse. That man is Papa Bull. He's a thief, a purveyor of stolen goods. Why not have him arrested? Oh, it's been done, but has it changed him? No, I'll find a way to help him sometime. I'm just waiting. Just waiting, you see. Oh, now, don't fail me, my old friend. Start, my beauty. Now, one, two, three, four. Eloise, is that the way to act? Are you sick? Shut up! You monster of tin and grease, I'll conquer you yet. Oh, no. No, no, no. Uh, what's the matter? Take it back or I'll choke the life out of you. Take it back. I take it back. Well, that's better. Now bring this bracelet to the O and get me absent for it. Oh, but Nana, it makes you crazy. You do as I say. Come back soon. I've been waiting. Dion. Dion. Hey. Dion, it's me, Papa Bull. Nana hurt you again? Look at me. Oh, I'm all right. It's nothing. Why do you let her do it? Why don't you hit her back? I'm afraid of her, Papa Bull. But she's my sister. Sister? Well, that doesn't stop her. Well, perhaps you're right. It's better not to cross her when she's been drinking. Why don't you take her away, dear? Where? She wouldn't leave here. We lived on a farm once. She hated it. She made me run away with her. A farm? Oh, I don't blame her. I wonder what it would be like, Papa Bull. To see the clear sky again. To lie in the grass and smell the clean earth. Earth? That's dirt. And you'd catch coal, too. Sam! Oh, there she is up in the window. You're here! Yes, Nana, yes, I'm going. I'm going now. Ah, well, Eloise, we have our own troubles, eh? Come on, now. One, two, three, four. Oh, oh, uh, look. Oh, 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 good evening, Sewer Rat. What do you want, eh? Look, I have money, Bull. Money? Where did you get money? I was in the church. I was praying in the church. You mean you took it from the poor box? Sewer Rat. <laughs> How much is it? 
Ten francs, enough for supper for Chico and me. Enough for us all. Where is Chico? In the sewer over here beneath the cover. Well, 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 lift it up and call it. You want me to do everything. You call him. Oh. Mother in heaven, these things are too heavy. Now, where is he? How can you see anything down here anyway? Chico! Hey! Chico! Listen, he's coming this way. How can a man who works in the sewer find it in his heart to see? Hey, Chico! Hey, boo! Come up here! Tony! Get out of the way. <sighs> Fresh air again. Good. Well, Papa Boo, how are you tonight? <laughs> you sound happy, Chico. I am, and you know why? Because I've discovered something, and it's this. If you pretend you're happy and pretend long enough, you will be happy. I've proved that to myself. That's why I'm such a remarkable fellow. That's why I'm an atheist. Look, Chico, money. We're going to have supper. Ten francs. Oh, we're going to have a feast. I know the best cafe in the quarter. The hole in the sock. Come on. And now let's drink to something else. Come on, boo. Oh, no. What shall it be? Huh? Oh, no, no room for anything else. No more. Where were you? Where were you? Now, what's all that? None uh, again. The aunt must have been late for the absent. Why, I didn't wait for you all night, no. Anna. No, please. She's beating her. Let them fight. Let oh. them fight. Why does the young one stand for it? Let her alone, do you hear? <laughs> let the girl alone. Get away from me. I said to let her alone. Get out. Don't let him hit me. You... Get out. Go on. Get out of here. You come home, the aunt. Go on! Go on! You. You there on the floor. Stop crying and stand up. Now come with me. Let us out there. Where are we going? Well, what does it matter? Well, what are you crying for? You're not being beaten now. <laughs> Shut up! We can walk over there and sit down. There, on the church steps. Well, this is a fine ending to a nice supper. I didn't mean to bother you. Please go back. Oh, now you want me to go back. I give up my wine and my friends to get you out of there, and now you want me to go back. Well, maybe I should. It's none of my affair anyway. Of course it isn't. Every time I come up out of this sewer, I get into trouble. Then I'll go. You have troubles enough. Well, I am probably one of a half dozen men in all Paris who at this moment has practically no troubles to speak of. That's because of my principles. And shut up. Oh, I can't help it. I know. You feel a little sick, eh? Well, it'll all pass off in a little while. Who was that girl? My sister. Your sister? And she beats you like a street dog? Oh, well, that's justice for you. That's love. That's why I don't believe in God. That's why I'm an atheist. You what? Well, why do you look at me like that? Is there anything so strange in a man not believing in God? Oh, but you must believe in him. It's the only hope there is. You must have faith. In, in religion? <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. I'm an atheist because I was religious. I've gone all through that. Didn't you ever pray? Didn't you ever... Pray? <laughs> How I've prayed. But he never heard me. And I gave him a fair test, too. Three times. First, I prayed to be a street washer. Above all things, my ambition was to be a street washer and work in the clean air on top of the ground. So I chose the finest church in Paris, the Cathedral of Notre Dame, and with my good money, I bought the biggest candle in the place, five francs. And you didn't become a street washer? Of course I didn't. I'm still in a sewer. That's because you prayed with words. And a candle. Five francs worth of candle. But no soul. Who has no soul? If you had, you'd use it to pray with, your soul and your heart. Listen. Just words and nothing. Listen, I'm a philosopher. If you think I just gave up, you're crazy. I said perhaps God meant me for a sewer man. All right, I'd be a sewer man. Then you did give up. No, I just changed to something else I wanted. Again, I put my hand in my pocket. Five more francs for another big candle. This time I wanted a, a wife. A good wife with yellow hair. Yellow hair is not so hard to find. I don't mean yellow like yours. Much prettier. And did you get her? No. I'm still in the sewer, and I still live alone. You're like a child. You should have kept on praying. Well, who said I didn't? I'm broad-minded. I gave him still another chance. And this time I wanted an experience. 
everything we do is an experience. I don't understand what you mean. I didn't expect you to. Nobody but Chico understands these big thoughts. I wanted for once in my life to have enough money in my pocket to climb into a taxi cab like a gentleman and say, you, driver, make the grand tour. You prayed to God for that? When all you had to do was to ask Papa Bull, he would have done it for you for nothing. Well, that is not the point. First, I was going to tell the driver, take me to the Place Concorde, then to the Champs-Élysées, then the Arc de Triomphe, and then to my home at number 48 Rue Notre Dame de Lorette, and the devil with the expense. Yes, I gave the Lord every opportunity. And what did you get? Candle smoke. <laughs> Fifteen francs worth of candle smoke. That's why I'm an atheist. I can't believe you really are, my son. Who's that? Someone standing there in the shadows. Good evening, dear. Oh, Father Chevillon. Good evening, Chico. You'll forgive me, Father, but I'm not very happy to see you. I'm not at all fond of priests. So I understand. But I want to do something for you. I don't want anything. I ask for nothing. You did once. Fifteen francs worth. Oh, so you were listening to me. Be charitable, Chico. Let us say I, I overheard. And since the good Lord is rather busy answering all the requests made of him, let me answer one for him. You wish to be a street washer, Chico? You are hereby appointed. What? You can do this? It's done. Here, take this card to the commissioner. The cart and the hose are yours, Chico. You see, a street washer. Now I'm going to ask something of you, Chico. Take these two medals of St. John and St. Agnes. Oh, wait a minute. Religious medals? They'll protect you from danger, Chico. Please give them a chance. And whether you like it or not, I'm going to pray for you. Good night, dear. Good night, Father. I'm coming to see you tomorrow in the morning. Good night, Chico. And remember, the good Lord has a sense of humor, too. Did you hear him? I'm a street washer. I've risen. I've risen. Oh, I've got to tell Bull. Wait here for me. I'll be back. sit by you on the steps. Oh, that's what I like best about a church. The steps. No one ever speaks to me. Oh, I'm sorry, Sewer Rat. I was thinking. Deep problems? I'm very interested in deep problems. There is a God, isn't there? Oh, yes. I believe in God. God just helped Chico, but he doesn't know it. I wonder if God would be very angry if a person grew tired. If instead of waiting for God to come to her, she tried to go to God. Oh, that's a very deep problem. Very deep, yes. Sometimes I have... Where are you going? Let me come. No, go back. But there's nothing down there, just a river at the end of the street. That's... Deanne? Deanne, where are you going? It's just a river. Hi, Judge Chico! Hi, Judge Chico! 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 me, Santa Maria. Forgive me. Please, forgive me. There she is. Hey, come back here. Come here. What are you trying to do? Let me alone. No, you don't. Stand over there. Away from that wall. That's a terrible thing to do. Oh, how do you know? How does anyone know there are worse things than this and you've no right to stop me? All right, then jump off. Drown yourself. Lie in the morgue with a rope around your hair. What do I care? Women like you, you sicken me. You know, I'm still shaking all over. Get back a little. Whew. Why did you want to do a thing like that? Because I can't go on. Because I'm afraid. Afraid of your sister? Of everything. No, you can't be. You have courage. The idea of jumping into a river, that takes courage. I couldn't do it. You could. If you felt there was no hope. But you say you don't like this life. If you don't like it, you're not bad. Why, why do you say that? Well, I don't know why, but I know. If you don't like it, it makes all the difference. <laughs> Look at me. I never liked working in a sewer, but it has never made me feel low. Why, sometimes I feel like a king for no reason at all. I've noticed that I'm a very remarkable fellow. 
Is there nothing you're afraid of? Not a thing. Why should I be? Why should you be? Someday you stand up and fight your sister. That will make you free. Be yourself again. What will that be? Strong, happy. It's easy if you give yourself a chance. <laughs> Look at me. I've risen to be a street washer all on my own. And I have two religious medals worth at least 15 francs. Well, that's good. You could be like me, too. Could I? Of course. You know, I feel... I feel sorry for you. Well, now, there I go. I'll have you on my hands if I'm not careful. You can go. I'm not keeping you. Well, oh, that's the way to talk. But I didn't mean it. I'm your friend. Do you like that? Yes. Listen. Well, life is never dull here, is it? Come on, let's see what's happening. Mexico, a bull. What is it? The police. They're taking people right and left. A raid. Yeah, look, they have your sister. Mama. You, come here. What are you doing here? Nothing. What's your occupation? Well, I, I have no work. You pray? Take this girl, too. No. Wait. You can't arrest her. She hasn't done anything. Since when are you giving orders, sewer man? Sewer man? <laughs> I'm a street washer, and I say you can't take her. We have orders to take every unmarried girl in this quarter for questioning. Now, get out of the way. Wait, that's just it. Unmarried girls. She's married. Oh? Who's her husband? Who? What do you mean, who? Who? Me. He's lying. She's my sister. She's not his wife. One moment. Where do you live, sewer man? Street washer. 48 Bruno to Dame de Lorette. We'll be up to see you tomorrow. Now get along. Get along, everyone. Come on, now get along. Move on. Now, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Because you're kind. Yes, and I'm ruined. They'll come tomorrow and find I have no wife, and they'll take my new job away from me. Oh, that's what I get for being so kind. If I could be there when they come, I could say I was your wife. We could say we were married in Italy. That's why it isn't on the records. Say, well, that's pretty good. And I won't have to go back to the sewer. That's very good. Bull! Uh, hey, Bull! Yes, yes. Wind yes. up your taxi. Start her up. Sure. What for? You're going to drive me home. Me and my bride. Hey, look. She really started. Eloise, it's a miracle. Here, get in. Get in. Now, remember, Dion, you mustn't take this seriously. I'm only doing this to help you. You're not going to take advantage of me. No. Oh, no. Good. <laughs> hurry up. Hurry up before it stops again. Where to? Make the grand wedding tour, Bull. First the Champs-Élysées, then to the Place de la Concorde, then the Arc de Triomphe, and then home, and the devil with the expense. For tonight, I am the Bank of France. Hooray! <laughs> it stopped. <laughs> oh, never mind. The Bank of France will have to walk. Come on. Act Two of The Seventh Heaven, starring Janet Gaynor as Dion and Charles Farrell as Chico. <laughs> It's a few hours later, and dawn is just breaking over Paris as Chico and Dion return from their walk. Slowly, they mount the long, open stairway six flights up to Chico's room, high on the rooftop. Only a little more. Tired? No, but you live so high up. Well, that's what I like. Up, where the air is clean and you can breathe. Give me your hand. Mm -hmm. No, please. I can manage. You're not afraid, are you? No? That's right. Never be afraid of anything. Come on. This is my room. Well, go in. Do you like it? What's the matter with you? Can't you speak? Oh, no, it's very nice, but it's so small, I thought... You mean it's only one room, eh? Yes. Well, it's all I ever needed. It's all you need. It's yours. Mine? But what about you? Oh, don't worry about me. I must go to work now. Today I wash the streets. They'll be washed as never before. Everyone will talk of it. And tonight? Tonight? Oh, oh I'll stay with Boo. He'll be glad to have me. 
Is that why you were worried? I don't like you to give up your room just for me. When will you come back? You want me to? It's your place. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll come back for all my meals. Breakfast, dinner, and... Wait, are you a good cook? I think so. Well, we'll see. Now, remember what I said. Be afraid of nothing. Be brave and be happy, eh? If I'm happy, I'll owe it to you. No, 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 to yourself. Goodbye, Diana. Goodbye, Chico. Who's there? It's me, Bull. Oh, Papa Bull. Hello. Oh, come in, Papa Bull. Was that you singing, Dion? <laughs> was it so very bad? Well, it wasn't good. But it was good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw Chico on the street. He was singing, too. Loud. The same song. Oh, was he? It comes easy to him. For me, it's so new. Until you came here, eh? Until I came here, Papa Bull. Until I climbed up here with him one week ago. Six flights into the sweet air. It's a fine view of heaven you get from here. It is heaven. Seventh heaven. Hmm. I suppose uh, Nana will be really surprised when she finds you've been staying here. Nana? They're letting her out of jail tomorrow. I thought you ought to know. It was just one week of heaven, wasn't it? You're still afraid of her. Of course, it uh, could be fixed. How? Well, if you were really Chico's wife, eh? Why should he want me for his wife? He prayed for one once. He told me a wife with yellow hair. Much prettier than mine. He doesn't want me, Papa Bull. I don't blame him either. Oh, I don't know. He's very funny this week. He sings all the time. He's always done that, hasn't he? Yes, but uh, I don't know. It's never been so loud. <laughs> Chico, go to sleep. I can't. I want to speak to you, Chico. All night I've been wanting to And all sleep. night I've been telling you to go to sleep. Now go on. Oh, you've been awake too? Well, I have problems. I'm thinking of the war. I hear we may go to war. No, no, it's not the war. What's that got to do with me? This is the greatest problem in the world, Boo. I've almost come to a decision. What is it? Oh, shut up. Uh... All right. I've decided. Decided? What? Boo. Have your taxi at my house at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Why? I'm going to be married to Diane. Chico! Diane? Chico! Come here. Oh, Chico, you're home so early. I haven't got your dinner yet. I know, that's all right. Let me look at you. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to fix my hair or... Oh, you look nice. I've just been making some soup for Madame Gobain. Her husband's sick. Oh, she's at her window. Yes, Madame Gobain. It'll be ready in a moment. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Madame Chico. Oh. Here, what's the matter with you? Oh, you don't like to be called Madame Chico, eh? No. Oh, no, it's not that. Here, look at this. What is it? It's a paper, a legal one. <laughs> I spent all morning at the bureau. I had to prove I was born and that you were born. And then they let me have it. Chico, it's a marriage license. Yes, you have to have a license for everything now. Oh, Chico, you want to marry me? I guess so, yes. Why? Oh, I don't know. You're so strange. You're not like anyone. Well, that's true. There's nobody like me. I'm a very remarkable fellow. Oh, but I don't understand you. You say you'll marry me, but you, you don't... What? You don't say anything. Oh. <laughs> you mean you want me to make love to you? Yes, Chico. <laughs> well, oh, I feel like a fool. Oh, Chico, please. Well, I'll do it this once, but no more. Diane, you and I, I mean, well, it's, it's like arithmetic. Arithmetic? Of course. You and I are each one. Well, 
One and one makes one. You understand? No. Oh, stop it, please. Oh, I can't. You ask me to make love to you. Now look at you. Well, this way then. Look. I am Chico. You are Diane. And this? This is heaven. Say it again. Diane. Chico. Heaven. Again. Diane. Chico. Oh, stop it. Oh, Chico, I can't believe it. It's so hard to believe. Well, it's true. What brought you to me, Chico? I can't remember. Was it God? No, not God. I came to you and you to me because... because that's the way things happen. And we're together. Because we want it so. We have courage. That's my religion, Diane. It's the, it's the idea that makes you what you are. You must put courage inside of you. That's what I do. That's why I'm such a remarkable fellow and astonish myself with what I am. That's why I'm an atheist. No. Eh? Oh, no, Chico, please not now. Don't say those things now. I'm too happy. Too happy, Chico. This must be it, Monsieur Brissac. It's a long climb, Father. Who is it? It's I, Father Chevillon. Father. Oh, good day, dear. Maybe come in. Chico isn't home, Father. He's gone out to work. We didn't come to see Chico. This is Monsieur Brissac. He wants to speak to you, my child. To me? If I may. We've been looking for you all week, dear. I've been here, Father. But it's three o'clock. Chico is coming back. We're going to be married, Father. Married? Monsieur Brissac, perhaps I'd better leave you alone. Uh, goodbye, my child. Goodbye, Father. What is it, please? You're much younger and much prettier than I thought you'd be. What is it you want? May I sit down, Dion? You know, you don't belong in this quarter. I hope I'm not too late to take you out of it. I don't know what you mean. Are you from the police? No, I'm a lawyer. I have some news for you. You didn't know that your uncle had died, I suppose. Died? He's left you and your sister, his sole heirs. But there's, well, there's a little difficulty about your sister. You'll receive it all. It's a matter of some 30,000 francs. Well? Uh, what would I have to do? <laughs> you don't seem as surprised as I thought you'd be. Your uncle has made a few stipulations. You'd have to leave here, of course. And Chico? What about Chico? Chico, I'm... I'm afraid not, dear. But Chico's my husband, or will be. It's the will be that presents the difficulties. Now, this money is... I don't want it. What? Not without Chico. I see. I ought to know better than to interfere in these things, but you're being very foolish. You could have everything now. But without him, so it wouldn't be anything, would it? I'm sorry, Dion, because I think you're making a great mistake. This... Chico is probably a fine fellow. He's a wonderful fellow. A remarkable fellow, monsieur. Well, I'm sure he must be. Nevertheless, what's that? The crowd. They're coming down the street. Listen. Well, it's here. What? It must be. They wouldn't cheer like that for anything else. It's war. War? Then that means Chico? All of us. Oh, no. No, Chico. Chico! Chico! Chico, where are you? Chico! Listen to them cheer, Diane. It's war. That's what they say, war. Where is Chico? Have you seen him? He's gone to report. All the men have to report. But when he comes back, can I see him? Yeah. Oh, Papa Boo! Don't worry, he'll be back. They won't send him at once. But what should I do? Go back to the house. Wait for him there. Go on! Chico, we would have been married now. Shh, there'll be time. When I come back. I'm not afraid, Chico. No, you mustn't be. The women take the men's places in war. They'll take care of you. This certificate says so. You see, it says... What is it, Chico? Oh, I'm a fool. 
It says wife, and you're not my wife. I'll stay here. I'll be safe here. No. I will be married now, this minute. How, Chico? By ourselves, because I say so. Because I will it. I, Chico, say we are married. Dear Lord, I... No, 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 I can't ask God. I am an atheist, but I must appeal to someone, to something. There is a God, Chico. No, if it were only true. Do you know that it isn't? Try him, Chico. Try him once more. God. God in heaven. Perhaps you are there. Perhaps not. Perhaps you give me this wife. Perhaps not. But if there is any truth in the idea of you, please make this a true marriage. I take you, Diane, for my wife. I take you, Chico, for my husband. Forever. I must go now, Diane. Don't be afraid. I won't. Let me come to the street with you. No, don't. Don't follow me. Chico! Stand still. Don't move. I want to remember you like this. And Diane, I'll come to you every day at this hour. Every morning you will feel me here with you. With my arms around you. Goodbye, Diane. Goodbye. Chico! I've been waiting for your husband to leave. Didn't Boole tell you I needed you? But I wanted you to come home with me? I'm married now, Nana. Well, the war's got him. The war, and you're coming with me. You can't make me. No. Perhaps the whip will help. Would you like to feel it again? It's no use, Nana. I'm not afraid of you anymore. Come here. You think I'm the way I used to be. I'm not like that anymore, Nana. Come here to me. I'm coming. You, my sister... My sister who filled me with terror because I was alone, because I was helpless. It's you who are alone now, Nana. It's you who are helpless. What are you talking about? I'm telling you that you will never touch me again. I'll kill you. No. No. If you ever come back here, I'll kill you. Stay away from me. You can never frighten me again. Never. Do you hear? You stay away. Because I'm brave. I'm not afraid anymore. I'm the wife of Chico, and I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Curtain rises on Act Three of Seventh Heaven, starring Janet Gaynor as Diane and Charles Farrell as Chico. A roadside near the Marne River. Waiting for orders, a battalion of French infantry sprawls wearily on the muddy ground, heedless of the shells that come screaming ever closer. Then down the road, a solitary figure is seen. One of the soldiers leaps to his feet and dashes toward him. Oh, oh, hey! Chico! Chico, my friend! Well, well, well! Bull, what are you doing here? What am I doing? I'm in the war, like you, Chico. Where's Eloise? You left her home? Eloise. Eloise is dead. Your taxi cab is dead? It was very sad, Chico, my poor Eloise. It was in Paris. Here was the German army marching through Campia and on to the very gates of the city. And here was our whole reserve force in back of the city. And what did Papa Joff do? He called on us, the taxi cabs of Paris. We brought up the whole reserve. What a sight. There was Eloise in the very front, going like a red-hot devil, with seven soldiers inside of her and five on top. She rose to the occasion, the old girl. Never missed fire once. Got to the front lines first, was hit with a shell, blew up and collapsed in the mud. <laughs> Heaven rest her soul. Poor Eloise. Yes. Poor Bull. Bull, tell me, did you see her before you left? Dia? Yes, Chico. She is fine. And her sister? Nana troubles her no more, Chico. She has disappeared. And Dion, she works. Works in the factory. They make shells. Shells? 
Chico, a very strange girl. I do not comprehend her. She says that every day as she stands before the machinery, it whispers to her, shells, shells, shells to kill. And every day also in the morning, she goes back to your room on the roof. Chico, she says you are there and it makes her feel better. I worry, Chico. I do not understand it. I understand it, boo. I am there. Every day at 11. What? Well, goodbye, Bull. Goodbye. What is happening? We're going to move up. It started. The big offense. You'll be careful, Chico. No, they can't touch me, Bull. I am Chico. My life is charmed. Their bullets were flattened against my chest. Still, you be careful. Well, you'll see. Goodbye, Bull. And when you go back, tell her that, that I'll be there every day. For work tomorrow. By orders of the war ministry, this factory is closed. It means the armistice. The armistice. Oh, Dan, did you hear? Is it peace? Peace. I've dreamed of it every night, every day. And then he said we were not to come to work tomorrow. Does it mean peace, Father? I don't know, my child. They're talking of it. And then Chico will come home. He will, won't he, Father? Dear, you've never heard from him in all these years. No. My child. Oh, but that doesn't mean... It doesn't mean he's dead, Father. I know that. You see, when he went away, we promised we'd join each other every morning. And he's never failed me. Even at the factory and all that noise... I'd feel him standing at my side. And when I worked at night and slept during the day, no matter how tired I was, I always woke up to find it 11 o'clock. My child. No, Father. Don't say I imagined it all these years. It was faith, the thing you preach. Yes, it was faith. Oh, it's getting near the time now. I'll go home. Dion, Mr. Brissac was here this morning. He's back from the front. Oh, then he'll come to see me, too. Every leave he's had, he's come to see me. He's been very kind to me, Father. <laughs> Once he even asked me to marry him. That's funny, isn't it? When I have a husband already. Why do you look at me like that? Chico and I, we were married, Father. Yes, my child. I think you were. Monsieur Bissac. I've been waiting here for you. You are back for good, monsieur. I hope so. It's nice to see you. They say there's going to be peace. Do you think so? Again, I hope so. Oh, I hope so, too. Then they'll all come back, all our friends. You'll need them now, Dion. What? What did you say? I've just come from the war office. I've been digging in the files all morning. I, I found this. What is it? A religious medal, an identification disc. There's no last name. Chico! Dion, please listen. It comes from a German prison hospital. He was dying then, a long time ago. No. No. No! Dion! But he came to me. Did he? Then. Then he. He didn't come? No, Dion. No. No, 
he couldn't have come. Please, Dion, you must have courage now. Courage? He never came to me at all. I just imagined it. Yes. Oh, it seems so foolish now. I was so sure. I thought God was helping me for four years. What nonsense. What childish nonsense. Dion, you must come away from here. Let me take care of you. Please, Dion. Oh, why not? What does it matter? I call this place heaven. I never want to see it again. Huh? Dion, what is it? Nothing. Eleven o'clock. I got so in the habit of believing. Listen. Look, the crowds. It's peace. Peace, they've signed the armistice. Do you hear them? It's peace, my child. Yeah, they've signed. They've signed. Over. The war's over. The war's over. I want to pray, Father. Help me to pray. All of us will pray. Thank God. Gloria, in excelsis, Dio. No, stop it. Pray. To what I'd like to know, tell me to a God. There is no God. Dio, don't. Oh, let me alone. I know what I'm talking about. For four years, I believed, I believed I was married and there was a God protecting me. Well, there's nothing. It's all false. My hope in Chico was false. I pretended this place was heaven. I clung to it as Chico told me to. But it's all false. He's dead. Now, when I want your God most, he's not here. He doesn't exist and there's nothing, nothing, Dion, nothing. please, please come away with me. Yes, that's right. Take me wherever you want me to go, anywhere. The war is over, isn't it? It's over. It's over. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. It's Chico. <laughs> Chico. Dion. Dion. Where are you? Where are you, Dion? Here. Here, Chico. Come closer. Let me touch you. Chico. You don't see me. Chico. No. No, Dion. I can't see. But my eyes are filled with you. Oh, my Chico. Then it's true you have been here always. And I thought God had deserted me. No, Dion. He never has. At the hospital, they thought I was dead. Dead. I've been hit by every shell that's made, but nothing can kill me. I don't think I'll ever die. Chico. And I'll see again, too. They can't keep me blind. Because it's all true. Those big thoughts I had, that was God, after all. He's within us, Dion. I know it. For now that I'm blind, I see. I tell you, I'm a very remarkable... Now, here's Mr. Keeley with our stars. And here they are, Janet Gaynor and Charles Farrell. You know, we can't tell you what a thrill it was to hear you recreate that immortal love story. <laughs> and Janet, how did you enjoy playing Dion again after all this time? Yeah. Well, I loved playing it, Bill, just as much as I did the first time. I didn't dream that Deanne would ever be anything to me again but a cherished memory. And, of course, it was wonderful to be such a remarkable fellow again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you pick up a copy of Look Magazine tomorrow, you'll find an excellent story about tonight's broadcast. There was such widespread interest in our show that Look Magazine has pictorially recorded this historic reunion for their readers. So you'll both be able to add another cherished memory to your scrapbooks. Janet Gaynor and Charles Farrell in the 1951 version of Seventh Heaven. 
Well, that was a mighty long layoff between performances, Bill. <laughs> yes, it was too long, Charlie. And I think our audience would be interested to know why you both have been content to give up such successful picture careers. How about you, Janet? Well, I've been happily married for many years, and Adrian and I have a wonderful 10-year-old son named Robin. Mm, Janet's too modest to mention that she's also one of the best-dressed women in Hollywood. <laughs> the credit for that goes to Adrian, of course. But how about you, Charlie? Are you too modest to add that you're the mayor of Palm Springs and own the very famous racket club there? Yes, it sounds Charlie is a very remarkable fellow. <laughs> Janet, do you remember how you felt when you were presented with your Academy Award? Uh, extremely nervous and excited? Oh, naturally, I was thrilled and honored. But the awards were brand new then, and I didn't have the precedent of all the suspense and excitement there is now. Well, Janet, would you care to guess who the lucky lady will be uh, next Thursday night? I should say not. I can just imagine what those five nominees are going through. My sympathy goes out to them. And, of course, my congratulations to the winner... And speaking of winners, Bill, your new Lux Flakes with color freshener is a winner in our house. And I know it's always been a winner in Hollywood. Well, not only in Hollywood, but in Palm Springs. <laughs> After all, I'm the mayor and I ought to know. <laughs> 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 but I do think before we go, Charlie, we ought to know about next week's show. Well, next week we'll have a very unusual story about a policeman who hates criminals only to accidentally become one himself. It's 20th Century Fox's exciting drama, Where the Sidewalk Ends. And as our stars of this intriguing drama and playing his original role, Dana Andrews. Co-starring with him will be beautiful and talented Anne Baxter. It sounds wonderful, Bill. Good night. Good night, John and Charlie. We'd love to have you back again. He's in the news, one of Hollywood's loveliest... <laughs> Eva Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Where the Sidewalk Ends, starring Dana Andrews and Ann Baxter. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. The play Seventh Heaven was written by Austin Strong and originally produced on Broadway under the direction of John Golden. Our music was directed by Rudy Schrager. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Dana Andrews and Ann Baxter in Where the Sidewalk Ends. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>